Hello and welcome to 15 Minutes with Longevity. I'm Giselle where time ends and today we're going to be talking about sleep. I have with me um, in actually in the medical offices of Dr. Rossman who is the chairman of the South African Society for Sleep Medicine and we're going to be talking about sleeping, sleep disorders, what they are and how we can better improve our sleep patterns. So Dr. Rossman, first of all I want to just talk about this whole idea of what is healthy sleep, what do we consider to be a healthy sleep, sleep pattern in any person, probably more, mostly an adult, but... Um. Okay, basically the amount of sleep you need is the amount that keeps you going the next day efficiently. You can't sleep more than you need, but you can sleep less. That's a bank that you've got to pay back there. At some point you're going to have to catch up. How will you know what is more or less? Well, when you start falling on your nose, you've probably slept too little. Mm -hmm. um, and if you slept too much? <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't. Okay. If you're sleeping an extra two hours over a weekend, you've probably slept too little during the week. Okay. So that's quite a good rule of thumb, um, if you need to catch up that amount. Because I'm always interested in how we always want to quantify everything. So we have these gauges of, you know, minimum of six hours or, you know, between six and eight hours. There are normal short sleepers and there are normal long okay. sleepers. The average for an adult is probably somewhere around seven and a half hours. Um, but if you're, let's say, a normal six-hour sleeper, then the message is don't marry a normal nine-hour sleeper because you're either going to bed together or you're getting up together, but you're not doing both. <laughs> and you can't change it. How do you work that one out, by the way? <laughs> Before you get married, <laughs> you practice sleeping together. Okay. You That's said it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's consider that when, uh, as a person, we're not, I'm not sleeping, what would be considered normal, I'm tired during the day. What kind of sleep disorder could I, I mean, what would that be termed? Okay, in we're, talking medical? we're talking insomnia there. Now, okay. there are three large groups of sleep disorders. There are the insomnias, people who are sleeping too little, either difficulty falling asleep or difficulty maintaining sleep, or else for some other behavioral reason they're not sleeping. Then there are the hypersomnias, people who are sleeping too much, uh, falling asleep in company, mm. falling asleep with their nose in the soup, behind the wheel, and so on. And then there are what I like to call the things that go bump in the night. Those are the sleep movement disorders, people who sleepwalk, assault their partners, raid the fridge during sleep. So those are the three big groups, but if we're talking sand and area, if you like, what we're going to see primarily is insomnia because of bad habits. Bad? So lifestyle related. Lifestyle insomnia. related, absolutely. Okay. It's become a, a, a thing to show that you are putting in all this effort by spending 12 hours a day at the office. Well, that's wonderful, except that when you're tired, bits of the brain start switching off. The brain does not switch off in one go, it switches off in modular fashion. The last to go is your physical function. So by the time you're literally falling over, you, you're really too far. But one of the first things that goes is the bit of brain that has to do with uh, problem solving. And that's why when we're tired, we can't solve problems. And the next morning, we'll wake up and it's the aha moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, that's easy mm -hmm. and you do it very simply. Now, you can imagine if you've got your investor spending 12 hours a day in the office, do you really want him making decisions about your investments on a Friday? Probably not, because the chances are he's going to do it badly. Mm. But this is what tends to happen, particularly your, your young executive you who's know, trying, to -type trying to climb the, the corporate, corporate ladder. ladder. Once you get to the top, that's fine. You go off and play golf. Mm. Um, but it's the guys trying to prove themselves. And of course, they don't wor they're not always working efficiently. When you're tired, you're a danger behind the wheel. You can be more dangerous than driving drunk if you've been awake for 19 hours. And that's so interesting, because I think people don't really right. put any emphasis on that at all. Sure, and then look what happens on a Friday. You haven't slept well the whole week mm. because you've been working and doing all sorts of things. Friday night, you're going to have a few drinks. So now you've added the alcohol effect to the insomnia effect which is why there are, it's more dangerous to be in the car in the early hours of the morning, despite the fact that there are the fewest cars on the road. Mm. But that's the it's time the when you're most likely to be killed in a car accident. That's because of the fatigue effect. Yeah, and accumulation during the week. Right. And there are obviously other outcomes as well. I mean, I understand, we, we spoke earlier, little mood is affected, your weight is affected. Right, mood, one of the important mm -hmm. functions of, of sleep is mood control. Um, if your mood goes, you become depressed, almost invariably you'll have a sleep disorder with it, and vice versa. So when was a good day to speak to that boss that was sleep deprived? 
Monday. <laughs> He's got a chance to catch up over the weekend. Okay. Um, people who are not sleeping tend to become ratty, irritable, mm. really unpleasant. But depressed people tend to have a sleep problem. Okay. Um, memory. Sleep has very important memory functions. It first of all consolidates your, your memory. It gets rid of the stuff you don't need. So it's like defragging the hard drive. And it also allows you to access distant memories. When we're awake, we think um, linearly. So this to that, to that, to the next. Mm -hmm. When we're asleep, we can access all those different things. And that allows us basically to bring that all together. And again, a reason for the aha moment in the morning. Because during that sleep, you've done that. If one wants to write an exam, it's better to study, then sleep, then write, than to sleep, then study, then write. That sleep helps consolidate that information. And in bad cases, this can get so bad that people might even look like Alzheimer's. Mm. It can get that bad. Sleep controls all your body's rhythms, which includes bone growth, immunity, um, temperature, blood pressure, sugar. If you stay up all night, your sugar's going to be up the next day. Um, adrenaline control, cortisone control, all the hormones, and so on. Um, physical recovery, healing takes place while we sleep, but so does brain mental healing. Mm. That's very important for all those functions. And if you start messing around with that, you're going to find that all sorts of things go wrong. How long does it take to create a real problem in, in the human around sleep patterns? Is it quite quick or, or is it has to be habitual over time to to create a really serious well, sleep problem? It, it can be very quick. Typically, the, the usual insomnia pictures, stress-related, anxiety-related, will begin with an event. So there's something that stresses you, your dog dies or, or whatever. Problem at work, big presentation. Something, something like, like, that. like that. Become anxious. Anxiety is the best thing in the entire world to keep you awake. That comes from the bad old days when we were living in caves and being hunted by saber-toothed tigers. Because you, if you, you had to wake up, yeah. otherwise you got eaten. So we're very good at that. Now, there are not all that many saber-toothed tigers around anymore, but we still you respond. You say that. They might be. <laughs> might be. They I might not appear many. like that. I haven't seen many lately. <laughs> yeah. um, but we still respond the same way. Mm. So now one becomes anxious. Anxiety keeps you, you awake. So you're tired the next day. You then do what appears intuitive but turns out to be wrong. I'm going to bed early to catch up. Now, the problem with that is that our body's set on all these cycles. So your regular bedtime mm -hmm. is the best time to go to sleep, not before and not after. That time is your best time. So now we go to bed earlier. We're not ready to sleep even though we're tired. So we don't sleep. Now sleep is very active. If you do an EEG, a brainwave test, you lots and lots of exciting things going on in your head. But falling asleep is passive. The harder we try, the less it happens. So now we're lying in bed, we're anxious, we decide we're going to try and sleep, and of course it doesn't happen. So now we very effectively train ourselves, Pavlovian type of effect, that getting into bed means waking. So after a very short time, people get into mm. bed and the body now recognizes bed as being a wake place and all the lights go on. And this then becomes self-perpetuating. Ultimately, the original stress thing is long gone, but we're still responding that way. So the treatment's pretty obvious. You don't use pills, you retrain. Yeah. And that actually can happen within a week. You can get very rapid results in that direction and in the other direction. Are you seeing more consciousness and, and a need for people to have more formalized sleep counseling? I think one of the yeah. reasons why it's becoming more prevalent is because we've now got electricity and we've got TVs and we've got laptops mm. and all the rest of it. You see, in the bad old days, when the lights, when the sun went down, you didn't have much option, you went to bed. Sure. So you entrained yourself very well. Now we've got all sorts of other options. Yeah. So you bring to the keep work us home. Distracted. That's right. You bring the work home. And that technology and in the bedroom. I mean, do you have advice on that when you see people? Is that something that's interfering with yeah, sleep patterns? Yeah. Bedrooms are for sleeping. Studies are for working. Mm -hmm. And never the twain shall meet. Keep the TVs out of the bedroom. Bedrooms must be comfortable, quiet, dark, cool comfortable bed. That's what's called sleep hygiene. That's the sleep equivalent of brushing your teeth. It's not rocket science. The bed, the sleep environment has to be conducive. But you also have to give yourself enough time to wind down to sleep. You can't go from mentally hyper alert, dealing with all the problems of the day, straight mm -hmm. into bed. In the morning it takes our brain about an hour to boot itself up. That first hour we're not functioning properly. But that's fine because it takes you that long to get to work. It takes about an hour to boot down at the end of the day. 
And if you don't give it that time, you're not going to sleep because you're still wound up and you're mulling over everything in the day and your brain's running to 100 miles an hour. You're not going to sleep then. You've got to allow it to wind down. Now, if you're lying in bed and you're watching a really good thriller and people being blown up and murdered every five minutes, you're not going to be able to get to sleep. Yes, I actually read some research on that recently that showed yes. that that can be quite disturbing actually right. to sleep. And the American TV programs are superbly designed to hold your attention. And they do that by keeping the excitement going. So if you're watching that sort of thing, you're going to be drawn into it and it's going to wake you. That's so far better to record the mm -hmm. thing and then watch it the next early the next evening and then you can calm down afterwards and go to bed. Is there any specific tips, because we're going to have to round up now, but on your bedroom, apart from keeping everything out, are there any other ideas around sound, light, um, making it more sleep friendly? Okay, most people prefer not to have light. Some people are not bothered. If you are bothered, double line the curtains. Noise is an issue, but if it's hot, you need to let the air in, you, so you find there's a problem there. So if you can mask it, that's useful. A fan, optimally an air conditioner, because then you can close everything off. Temperature is an issue. When we sleep, our temperature drops by one degree. So later on, we prefer at night, we prefer the lower temperature. Women tend to prefer it a little bit warmer than men as a rule. So the trick there is set your temperature to the lower person's requirement and then let the other person just use an extra blanket. Mm. But temperature is very important. And then the feeling of being secure. If you're lying in bed and all you can imagine is someone coming through the window at you, you're not going to sleep. And I've had patients who cured that but just by buying a big dog. So you have to feel secure in that environment as well. This is your, your home space. You've got to feel secure and comfortable in it. Great. Thank you very much. It's been really Welcome. interesting. Thank you. Well, that's all we have for this week's show. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you again same time, same place next week. Have a great week, and sleep well.